Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,324. Hey, if you want to download this Excel Workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,324, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great trick here. We're going to talk about extracting records with a formula and when to use the rows or count ifs functions as your number incrementer. Now, let's go over to the answer sheet and see what we're trying to do. We have a data set, and here's our condition. If I change the criteria here to chin, instantly a new set of records is extracted. This is the situation when you want to use the rows function, because the criteria is the same as the formula is copied. As we copy the formula down, the criteria is always chin. Over here, we have a different situation. Here's top five numbers. So we have a formula to extract top five. But this formula is extracting from the sales rep column. As we copy this formula down, it's extracting the name based on the units. And notice it's changing as we copy down. So that will be the trigger when to use count ifs or rows. Now let's go see how to do this. I'm going to come over to 1324. Now we're going to start off with condition sue, so we have to count. That's a simple matter of using the count ifs functions. Highlight the entire range, comma. And then I'm going to use my right arrow to get the name of the sales rep. So we're simply counting with one condition here, and Enter. So we have four records from this data set that we need to extract. Now you would think that we could simply use a lookup function and look up sue. But the fundamental problem here is this. That's a lookup value, and we have multiple matches for Sue. Anytime that's the situation, we actually have to switch over to an array formula, meaning one lookup value, multiple items to return. Now, we're going to use index function to look up each one of these columns, but we're going to need to know the row number, 1, 3, 8, and 13. All right, so let's see how to do this. Equals index. And in the array argument, that's the argument that contains the items I want to go look up and return back to the cell. Now, when I copy this down, I need it locked. But when I move over to units and sales, I need this whole column to move over. So I hit the F4 key one, two times. Notice the numbers are locked, but not the columns. Those A's will move to B and C as I copy to the side, comma. Now, this is the argument row numbers. Remember, we have for this match right here, 1, 3, 8, and 13. So we have, in essence, multiple row numbers. So as I copy the formula down, I need to pull out 1, then 3, then 8, then 13 as relative positions or row numbers for index. Well, we can use the small function to pull those out one at a time as we copy down. Or we can use the aggregate function. Now, the aggregate function does all sorts of different calculations, including what we want, the small, so 15, comma. The second argument is options. And our array operation is going to contain errors. So we need to ignore them. So we put a 6, comma. And there's the magic argument. Array, aggregate function, is one of the few functions that has an argument where we can put array calculations, and the formula will not require any special keystroke. If we used the small function, we'd have to use the special keystroke, Control, Shift, Enter. Now, what do we have to remember? The array is relative position. So I need to, in this argument, create an array of relative positions from 1 to I think it's 14. We have 14 records here. So I'm going to use the row function. Row, I'm going to highlight any one of the columns inside of the data set, F4, close parentheses. Now what does row do? Well, it'll simply say I'm in row 6, 7, 8, 9. Because we put a range into this argument right here, it'll do a function argument array operation and actually spit out an array of answers. So if I hit F9, there's 6 all the way to 19. That's not what we want. We need 1 to 14, I think it is. So Control Z. Well, that's easy enough. I'm simply going to subtract row. But this time, I'm going to put a single cell. Now, 
I'm 100% sure that the field names at the top will always be attached to the data set. So I can simply click the cell directly above the first cell in our range, F4, close parentheses. Now look, what will this do? 6 minus 5 is 1. 7 minus 5 is 2, and so on. Close parentheses. If I highlight the entire array so far and hit F9, those are our relative positions. Now we need to filter because we want 1, 3, 8, and 13. Control Z. So we'll filter them by using division. And in the denominator, I'm going to create another array. Or any of you sales rep, F4, or any of you equal to our criteria, Sue, F4 to lock that. Now close parentheses. In the denominator, if I F9, those are trues and falses, meaning I found Sue, I found Sue. Anytime we have something in the numerator, those are numbers. Divided by true will give me the number. False will give me divide by zero error. Control Z. Now I can highlight the entire array and watch this. F9, there is my filtered lists. All the relative positions that index needs. 1, 3, 8. The divide by zeros will have no problem because 6 will tell our formula to ignore them. The 15, that'll be the small. It'll pull out the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest as we copy the formula down. Control Z, comma. And here's what the whole video is about. This K, for this type of setup, I need the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. As I copy down, that's when you use the rows functions. Now notice there's an S here. So when I give it a range, it'll just report a single number. Now I'm actually sitting in E10. So inside rows, I'm going to say E dollar sign 10, locking the first cell reference, colon E10, close parentheses. Now this is an expandable range because the 10 is not allowed to move as I copy down. But this one is. Right now, how many rows are there from 10 to 10? 1. 10 to 11, when I copy it down, 2, 3, 4, as I copy it down. So that's a number incrementer inside the K using rows and an expandable range that will always increment numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, as we're copying down. Come to the end. I'm going to close parentheses on the aggregate. There's my row number. That whole aggregate, if I F9, simply returns a single relative position or row number to index. Control Z. Now I come to the end. Close parentheses. And let's see if this works. Control Enter and copy it down just for the date column. Now notice that is totally working. Sue was 1-1, one, one, and then the next one was 1-4. One, the next Sue was 1, 4, and the final Sue was 1, 2. So it is working. Now we can turn off the num error, F2. Now we do not want to use if error. You see so many times that people post formulas that extract records or data, and they're using the if error. The if error relies on the fact that a formula comes out as an error. Now, because this is a big array formula, and array formulas take a long time to calculate, if you have an alternative logical test, then you want to use it and not run the array formula through the whole range. So I'm going to use if. Now, I've already created a number incrementer, so watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy rows over here, Control-C. And our logical test will be if the number incrementer, 1, 2, 3, as I copy down, if you get past our total count, F4, if that comes out true, well, what do we want? We don't want to run the array formula. We want to show nothing. So the syntax for show nothing is double quote, double quote. That's a zero length text string that will show nothing. Otherwise, run the formula. Now, the advantage to this is that the index array formula only gets run in the first four rows. All of the ones down below will never get to it because it will dump a zero length text string into the cell. Now, for big spreadsheets, this matters a lot. For smaller spreadsheets like this one, it really would have no noticeable effect. Now, Control-Enter, 
double click and send it down. Now I need to copy this all the way over, so I'm going to point to the bottom and drag it over. Now notice it pulled the number formatting, so I'm immediately going to point to the Smart tag, click and say Fill Without Formatting. And there we go. I've created a formula to extract records based on a single condition all the way down. If I change this to Chin, boom, it's working. Now let's try this situation over here. I first need to pull out the top five units, so I'm going to use the large function. Large, I simply give it the whole array of numbers. F4 to lock it, comma, and our K. Well, I already have it off to the side. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Whoa, wait a second. I thought it was just going to give me the, going to give me the top five. Well, no, it's not. And guess what? There's no error here, so you couldn't even use if error here, which of course is good. I'm going to build a logical test. I'm going to say if this number right here is bigger than this 5, our count, F4 to lock it. If that's true, comma, then double quote, double quote. Otherwise, run the large. Close parenthesis, Control, Enter. Double click and send it down. Now, realize we don't see anything here, but there actually is this double quote, double quote in the cell. You could actually come off to the side and say, is blank, which really should be called is empty, because that's what this formula checks. And of course, it's going to give us false, because there's something there. It really is, is this text? If I click right there, true. All right, now let's come over here, our formula. Well, I would like to just use index, and I'm only pulling sales rep name, so I F4, comma, and I would like to use the match function to simply look up this number, comma, within this range right here, F4 to lock it, comma, 0, because it's not sorted. Match should tell me the relative position of each item as I copy it down. Control, Enter double click and send it down. Well, Sue would be very happy to be credited with these 420s. But you can see, let's see, there's a 420. And then Kiki and Tyree. So that formula is not working. Of course, match is not going to work because it only finds the first 420. Now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come over here because we're going to use almost the same construction over here, aggregate. 15 is small, 6 is avoid errors. There's all of our relative positions and the division symbol. Control C, escape. Come over here, F2, and I'm going to replace all of this match. Control V. Now, what is our logical test in the denominator? Open parentheses. I'm checking all of these numbers over here. F4, are any of you equal to relative cell reference? Close parentheses. Now, right now, there's only one 504 over here. So if I evaluate this, there'll be one true, and it would pull out one row number. But when I get down to here, 424, 2420, 20, this little thing will have multiple trues, which will then pick out multiple relative positions, comma. And this is where the K argument is going to be different. Let's just pretend that we're doing the rows, which gives us number incrementers, which I happen to have off to the side. Let's just see what happens. Close parentheses. I closed on the aggregate. Now I want to close on the index. Control Enter and double click and send it down. Well, that's not going to work at all. Now the first thing, if we come back up here in F2, is that if we think about it, remember there's a match right here of 504. So if I'm looking through all the relative positions, and actually we could highlight this in F9, well, I need to pick out the first one, which is 4. When I come down, let's say this second 420, F2, if I were to select the array, remember this is relative positions being filtered, F9. Well, right here, I need. There's a 3, a 12, and a 14. I need the second one. So right here, the formula needs 1, then 2, then 3. Up here, it needs 1, 1. So that's where we have changing criteria. So in the K 
k argument, we're going to use the count ifs function. Now in the criteria range, I'm going to select this first cell directly to the left, type a colon, comma. And then criteria is this actual number, close parentheses. Now, in count ifs right here, this is a criteria range. I want to lock the first one. I'm going to lock the row there on the 10, but not the 10. Now this will be an expandable range. So count ifs, when it has an expandable range, when it sees the first 420, count ifs will only see one of them. When it sees the second one, it will count two and then three. When it gets to a new number, it'll be back to one. So we come there. There's our K with count ifs. Close parentheses on the aggregate. Row numbers is just that whole aggregate, right? Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And now Sue, Kiki, and Tyree are all credited with 420s. Now remember, what's in this cell right here? Double quote, double quote. So I can use yet another different logical test. I simply say, if this cell right here is equal to double quote, double quote, which will be true down here, comma. Then what do I want? I need to show double quote, double quote. Otherwise, run the whole array formula. Close parentheses, Control, Enter, double click and send it down. Now if I change this to 7, there we go. Put it back to 5. Come over and change this to Sue, and there we go. Now one other thing, a lot of times when I do data extraction videos like this with one condition, there's always comments below that says, well, what about two conditions? Well, it's easy to amend this. Once you get the basic idea of how this works, count ifs and then the, your extract formula, it's easy to change. If we said 1 slash 4 slash 2016 and added a second condition, we'd have to alter the count ifs. Now there's two. So I add the date column, comma, and then the actual date in G7, and Enter. Now there's only two. Now you can see this is not right, because we only want to isolate 1, 4. So I come down here, F2. And it's simply the denominator part that we need to change. So right before we only have one condition in the denominator, I'm going to put open parentheses, then very carefully come down here, close parentheses. Now remember right here is trues and falses, but I'm going to multiply it times our second condition, open parentheses. I'm going to say, are any of you dates F4? Are any of you equal to this, an F4? Now close parentheses. Anytime we get a true and a true, that will tell the numerator to pick out that relative position. So all we had to do was, in the denominator, add as many conditions as we want to alter this. Control Enter. Watch this. I'm going to come to the very corner, hold Shift, and then click. And I'm going to do this trick because I don't want to recopy this over and copy the formatting over. In the active cell, I'm going to hit F2. And now if I populate the formula all the way through the highlighted range with Control-Enter, the number formatting will not follow. Control-Enter. Now we can come up, change this to chip, and we get nothing. Change this to chin, and the second, and there we go. All right. Sometimes when your criteria is not changing as you copy your formula, you use rows as the number incrementer. Other times, if the criteria for extracting is changing as we copy our formula, then in the K argument, we want to use count ifs. All right, we'll see you next video.